I just want to encourage you, no matter where you are, even in your finances or whatever, you know when I moved back here, those years, 15 years ago, whatever, a lot of people don't know, not only did we not have anything, but as things would be, I was, I was somewhat in debt because when I left the church there, I gave them the books and everything and I left, them really not knowing that I'd never been able to reimburse myself sometimes from so much that I would take care of. So when Mary and I came here, we not only didn't have anything, but we had some debt overseas that we could have put off on the church or raised money for, but that's not what we do. But God in his goodness, yeah, he not only took care of us here, but he took care of our debt. Amen? So I know at times it feels like you may be sinking. I don't know where any of you are at. You know, I know times get tough. But we keep believing, amen? It's like when Oscar tells me, he says, oh, thank you so much, Frank. I'm always like, no, don't thank us. We're being blessed. People are giving to us. We're giving to you. And then he turns around and gives, amen? In fact, he told me he wanted everybody to, well, maybe not everybody. He definitely wanted me to know. He said, don't worry. The work of the Lord continues. He was on his way to up until those people keep preaching yesterday and visit other sick people. So it was encouraging the kind of faith that he has. So, that's some of what we're going to talk about this morning. I've tried to go other places, praying and asking the Lord what he wants, but it seems the Lord will not let me move from this place of faith. Believing God, amen, that we're going to believe God this year. God wants a real faith. We spoke last week, the message that's up there. I've heard from a few people that have listened to it about faith, about real faith, about really trusting in the Lord and believing what God says to have that faith. And I believe faith is really missing. It's missing in a lot of what our walk is in today, in a lot of in our Christianity. But God wants that trust to come back. Down through the, the ages and down through the Bible and down through even our Christian history, we've seen Faith emerge again and again. We've seen the Azusa Street Revival. We saw in the 1950s tremendous faith for healing. We saw in the 60s and 70s faith for worship and the gifts of the Spirit and for miracles that God could do these things. We've seen these things come. And now God wants a deep-seated trust in Him for these last days. A real trust in Him. And we spoke about how that faith pleases the heart of God. It blesses God when we believe against all odds. We can take Abraham. Uh, they call him the, the father of faith. But we can take Abraham as our example at times. As it says in Romans 4, For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God and it was accredited to him or counted to him for righteousness. That harkens back into to Genesis when God came to Abraham. And he said, Abraham, I want you to come out here. I want you to look at the stars in the sky. I don't know if you've, we, here in Houston, we don't get that opportunity. You've been somewhere where you've been able to look at the sky and see just the sky filled with stars. We don't get that opportunity much because we live in such a big city with all the lights and everything else that goes on. But if you've had that opportunity, the sky is filled with stars. He said, if you look at the sand on the sea, you see all those pieces of sand. Then he told him, this is going to be what's going to come from you. This is going to be the people that are going to come from you. It's always for God to take us beyond what we could ever imagine or think, right? We're always believing for this. Much. God, if you could just get me through here. And God has always got his purposes are so much greater than what we can see. So much greater. We get so bogged down in the natural. So bogged down in praying for our, our just... Our needs and the things that are bothering us, we, we, we forget to see that the promises that he's made to us, the promises that he's made to you are so much bigger than you. And then Abraham said, well, Lord, I don't have any children. And this servant in my house, he's going to be my heir. And God said, no, the heir is going to come from your own body. I have a purpose and I have a plan. 
And it says Abraham believed God and it was counted to him. That means accredited to him. That means as if you're putting accounts together and it falls on this side and says it's accounted. It's right. It was accounted to him for righteousness. Abraham was standing righteous before God. In other words, he was in right standing with God because, why? Because he believed. He simply believed. He believed what God said. And this is what God is after. God wants faith again. He wants us to trust him and believe with him. We become so religious. Even in America, there's so much religion. It's Christian religion, but it's religion because there's not real faith. There's talk about it. We can see what man can do. We've had 40 years of seeing what man can do, and man can do a lot, can he not? He can build structures. He can build organizations. He can raise money. He can, he can, he can do all kind of things, but really that deep-seated faith in God where we can say this was God. God brings us beyond. He puts us in the impossible. And he wants us to trust him. I think we, we cleared that up pretty, pretty, pretty well last week. We talked about how that when all this hyper faith and stuff was talked about years ago, it was as if it was some kind of entity on its own. I have faith. I'm a man of faith, a woman of faith. I have this faith. And really it got separated from a simple, a simple trust in God. I trust you, God. And this is what God was asking of Abraham. Trust me. We see in the very next chapter that Abraham, his wife comes to him, right? And she says, listen, I have this this maid, Hagar, and you can go into her and I'll have a child at her knees and I'll pretend like it's mine. And it was was what man could do. And it was nowhere near what God could accomplish. God is a God of life. God brings death. I mean, God brings life from death. This is where our faith is the strongest. That person you're praying for, that son or that daughter, your husband or wife, whatever, it it begins to look impossible. How many of you have been in that place? You get that phone call, that text, whatever, and it just seems like, wow, things are worse than ever. And your heart begins to sink. But we have to show ourselves up and know God can raise the dead. God lets things get to a point where they seem almost impossible. But we've got to keep believing. Sure, there's people that have got off. Sure, there's ones that have made mistakes. Sure, there are people that have presumed presumed upon God. But that is no reason to begin to preach that God doesn't do anything anymore. I found myself in somewhat of a predicament for many, many years now because because I was birthed of in the kingdom of into God's kingdom at home by myself in a in a in a very powerful experience. And then I'm glad that I was brought into some real free churches. And before things began to really get off, God kind of led me into the wilderness. So it seems people try to put you in camp. You believe God, is, God can do everything and you're, you know, you're always just living in hype? Or are you just in some dead religion? It's like, no, I want to walk in a real deep-seated trust with God. That God is able. Amen? God is able. We just were standing here praying for for Oscar's situation. Is God able? Yes, we have to know his will. I'm not sure exactly what his will is at this moment. But I know God can. Amen? I tell the story about many years ago when my mother-in-law was in the, had, a, had surgery, heart surgery. It went fine, but then she got pneumonia. And they had to put her into an induced coma for quite a few days, quite a few weeks. And I remember at one point the, the doctor, doctor said, you need to get the whole family together. She thought for sure we were going to lose her. And everybody's praying and getting on social media and telling everybody to pray and everybody's acting like they're in faith. But I'm I'm standing there saying, Lord, I don't know what your will is. I mean, I'm I'm praying God have your your will here. I'm praying touch her, but I want to know. I remember going home and sitting in my bedroom saying, Lord, I just don't know what your will is. And I felt like God speak to my heart and say, it is not her time. Then faith was there. Now I had faith. I was trusting God the whole time, whatever he wanted to do. But now I had a word from the Lord. And sure as God's word is true, she came out of that coma. And she lived for quite a few more years. It's not that we always have to have an exact word from God and know everything to to continue to trust him. We trust him no matter what's going on. 
But when he speaks to us like he did with Abraham, then we've got to believe that promise. Amen? We've lost this faith. Listen, listen to Paul as he talked to these Galatians. Oh, foolish Galatians. That's one translation. Another translation says, you stupid Galatians. Who's bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Before who eyes Jesus Christ has been evidently set forth, crucified among you? I only want to know this. Did you receive the Spirit by works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, you're now made perfect in the flesh? Have you suffered so many things in vain, if it yet be in vain? He that therefore ministered to you the Spirit and works miracle among you, does he do it by works of the law or by hearing of faith? Even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him righteousness, know ye therefore that they which are of faith the same are the children of Abraham. He's talking to these Galatians who are being invaded by the, these doctrines of the Judaizers trying to bring them back under the law. And he's saying, listen, you got filled with the Spirit. How would you get filled with the Spirit? By working something out? No, by hearing, by believing. By saying, yes, I believe what your word says. Were miracles done wrong you because of some working of some law or just some knowledge or was it by hearing of faith? It says, no. By hearing and believing. And Abraham believed God. This is such a powerful statement. If we don't get anything else, we see this this morning. Abraham believed God. He was told something by God, and he simply said, I believe you, and it was a credit to him for righteousness. He was in right standing with God right then. We miss so much of that today. We try. We struggle. We work. We try to do the right thing. We try to learn the right thing. We do all the, we go to classes. We have all these programs, everything that goes on. Everybody's trying to get things right, but the, what they're not doing is they're not trusting. They're not simply trusting. How foolish Noah looked. How foolish Abraham looked. How, how foolish Isaiah looked. How foolish Paul seemed to look to people at times. How foolish Daniel seemed to look because they simply believed. We've lost that childlike Christianity. It's all about knowing now and about this and about doing and, and good works and all this stuff instead of the, the simplicity of, of I just believe. I just believe. The word came to Abraham, he believed God. Again in James it says the scripture was fulfilled which says Abraham believed God and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. And he was because he was called the friend of God, James 2, 23. Romans 4, 8. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Cometh this blessedness upon the circumcision only or upon the uncircumcision? For we say that by faith was reckoned to Abraham righteousness. This is our example, faith. Before the law, believe. Trust in what God says. Was Abraham tried? It was difficult. It was many years before that child came, was it not? But God was waiting until the impossible, till he's 99 years old and she's 90 years old. And then God says, now. How many times do people give up before the promise of God comes? This is the real test. This is what happened years ago. And, I, and I'm glad that I sat under men that preach faith. I'm so glad that, that, that when I got saved, I wasn't in a church that divided the word like this. This is true and this isn't true. This happened today. This hadn't happened today. You have to be careful here. I was in churches that just said, believe this word of God. Just believe it. That then you're going to be tested on it. Many people were tested. and They began to fall away. Sometimes they, they, they just grabbed a word that wasn't for them. They had some preacher up there preaching hype. And other times there were ones that really heard God. But the journey got hard. The journey got tough. Because you'll be tested. And I want to be clear here. It's not like God is looking down and saying, well, I'm going to test this one. Hmm. I wonder if they're going to hang on to the promise. Hmm. I'll just make it as tough as I can on them. God takes no delight in that. But we have to remember he's an awesome God. 
He's an almighty God. And so that means that when, when you're down there struggling, he's not just like, well, that's just too bad on Marco. That's just too bad on Ryan. That's just... He's looking. He knows, I'm going to bring you through. He knows it. He can see the beginning and the end. He knows you're going to come through. We're caught in this time and space. We're caught in our trials. We're caught in our difficulties. We're caught in our circumstances. We're caught in all this, but he's not caught in any of it. He sees the end. You will come through. You will come through. And he knew, Abraham, you're going to come through. He told him right then, he said, you're going to, you're going to die of a, of a good old age. You're going to be blessed, Abraham. But he was tested. But he had faith. He trusted in that word of God. What about Joseph when, when he had the dreams that his brothers would bow down, even the, the moon and the stars would bow down, even, the, the, even to his father and mother bowing down? He believed God. His brothers thought he was arrogant. His brothers thought he was proud. Maybe there was some of that in there. I don't know, but I know one thing, that promise came to pass. And how did it come to pass? Do you see it in such a beautiful way? We have no time this morning to delve into that story of Joseph. There's actually a booklet out there on Joseph we've written if you want to see it. But we see that God preserves his people. So when God comes to Abraham and there's, a, there's an aching in his heart because he wants a child. There's an aching in his wife's heart. She wants a child. That's natural. That's not wrong. That's not to say, well, I'm self praying selfishly. It's, it's something he desired that God put in there. But God has got a greater purpose. He always has a greater purpose. And that greater purpose is I'm going to have a whole people. All you want is a son, Abraham, but I'm going to have a whole people. Because we're ignorant of many things. We can't see, as Paul said, he sees through a glass darkly. Sometimes selfishness tries to trip us up. Sometimes we're weak. Sometimes we're stupid like the Galatians. Or am I the only one here that can admit that? But then how does God still have his way? Because he's got a purpose. All he's asking us to believe. Abraham, believe me. So I'm going to get a whole nation. He's going to get Isaac. He doesn't begrudge us that. He doesn't begrudge the fact that when Sarah held that baby, joy unspeakable filled her heart. But God had even a greater purpose. And that faith that he's calling us to. Like I said, we've educated a whole generation out of faith. But I'm here to tell you, God wants faith. There's a whole generation of Christians because many were, were saved 20, 30 years ago and they've raised a whole set of Christians up in the church. And I'm going to tell you that God wants to touch some of their hearts. Some of you in this room, you've been raised. Second, first, third generation Christians. And God wants to use you. I think about Dave Wilkerson. What a voice he was for this generation before he passed on. His grandfather was a Holy Ghost preacher. His daddy was a preacher. He was a third generation preacher. You think he'd be, he'd be, he'd be uh, lazy. You think, you think he'd take things for granted. You think there wouldn't be as much power. Tremendous words from the Lord. God's going to do it again. He's going to wake people up to real faith. Man's got his hands on so much that it's made it difficult for that. We're encouraged in Hebrews 10, 23, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. Let us hold fast to what? Our profession. Let us hold fast to what we said. Have you ever been praying at times you have that promise of God and you can almost feel it like you want to proclaim it. This is what God said, but you know it's going to make the devil mad, don't you? This is what God said. Hold fast to that profession. This is what God's adding to it. We've had the hype. We've had the success. We've had the bigness. We've had all that. And I'm not here to debate how much of that was God or not. But I am saying this. Now is time. Now is time for patience and, and stick to itness and the toughness and hanging on to what God wants. And I know that sounds crazy, especially in the generation we are. They call them snowflakes. The generation where we raised so many children who don't know what it is, responsibility. They don't know what it is to really hold on to things and hang on to things. But God's going to teach them, amen? That's why I say people look at us now. It's Mary and I and 
and been married all these years and have all these kids and all this stuff. And they say, well, that, that's okay. That's the way it was when in, your, in those old days. And it is true, we're old. But I'll tell you, when, I, when we were young, we were, they were called yuppies. And we were one of them. Double incomes, no kids. Everything about ourselves. But God got a hold of us. God got a hold of us. God got a hold of us. And he taught us. We went under his discipline. We were talking about it the other day. I got saved. I got this book out, and I looked on every single thing I could find of what it was to be a man. I looked and got my concordance, everything God had to say about being a husband. She got in the Word of God to find out everything God said, got saying about being a woman of God and being a wife. And for years and years, I prayed, prayed Proverbs 31 over her, prayed every morning, God, this is the kind of wife I want. She prayed, this is the kind of husband I want. Our lifestyle was completely opposite to what God wanted. So he had to discipline, when we got saved, he had to discipline us and correct us and correct us and correct us and correct us. But thank goodness we were used to correction, amen? People aren't used to that in the church today. We're not used to correction. Not even from the pulpit. And what I mean by that is just not, not the preacher correction individuals because that's wrong, but the preacher preaching in such a way there's conviction. We're not even used to that. People just want to go to church and they want to get a takeaway. They want to get something that inspires them. People don't know what it is to go in and say, man, God's correcting me. We actually have had a generation of Christians who are taught how to, taught once you're saved, then we're going to continue. And the world is in the church and the world's in you and just continue on in the world. Instead of saying, no, there's a completely different way to walk. And that walk is by faith. Amen. It says in Hebrews eleven six, 6, but without faith it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Listen to those words. Without faith it's impossible to please God. I want to please God. I want to be a good Christian. I want to do what's right. I want to do what this. You're struggling. You're going to make yourself crazy. Stop and do this. Believe. Brother Frank, you don't know my problems. You don't know, you don't know the struggles I have. You don't know the difficulties. You don't know this. You don't know that. What I want to know, do you believe God? I do believe God. I believe God can take where I'm at and change it. Do you really believe that? Yes, then God will do it. Because you've got to believe that he is. And he's a reward of those who diligently seek him. Think about it for a minute. It's what inspires me at times. Every once in a while, I'll just stop and just think, wait a minute, I'm living my life. I believe in a God I cannot see. In a God, in many ways, I cannot feel except by the Spirit. In a God I cannot hear except maybe by the Spirit. This is what I'm believing. So my life should reflect that. It should reflect the supernatural. It should reflect that. You shouldn't look at a Christian's life and it's just like, well, it just, looks just like the world. There should be something other about it. Now, it doesn't mean that we don't have to walk in the mundane, but it means within their spirit, it's like, listen, I'm believing in a God that is there. You must believe that he's there and he's a rewarder. Do you believe he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him? Are you going to be rewarded? We're going to be rewarded. We're headed for, for the end, are we not? So, whether you're closer or not so close or it's 50 years away or, or close, it doesn't matter. We're going to have an, a reward. Brother Frank, you don't know my struggles. You don't know how difficult it's been. That's all right. He knows. He's waiting for you. He's saying, come on, you're going to make it. There's a reward for you. You see, we have a covenant with God. And it's based on all what he can do. And what's our part of the covenant? We got to keep that covenant. We got we to do our best. No, that's how they got in trouble with Moses, is it not? In the law. They said, okay, that's the law. We can do it. And they couldn't do it. They should have said, there's no way we can do this except by the grace of God. That's why I've often said you can take the Beatitudes, they call it. You can take when Jesus preached and he said, love your neighbor. Rejoice when you're persecuted. Turn the other cheek. But he said all those things knowing he was going to the cross. You see, when you have a crossless Christianity, that's why we get stuck in religion. Then you're just teaching people, you need to love your neighbor. That's not good. <laughs> what? You need to turn the other cheek. What? You need to rejoice when you're persecuted. What? How am I going to do that? Jesus knew he was going to the cross. Once the cross has happened, those things are possible through him. Amen? So do you see the covenant now? It's a covenant of faith. On his side, God says, this is my, this is my contract. This is, was your contract, the Old Testament. 
as Anthony said, there was glory to that. Here's my contract. Here's your contract. How many of you know we failed in our contract? Every day. Every day we fail. So what does he ask? Here's my contract. Here's you. Believe. So it's no longer a, just a contract. It's contact. It's not a contract. It's contact. Contact with God. God says, these are my benefits. This is what I promise. This, this is what I will do. This is who I am. These are my provisions. What do I want you to do? What do you think you can do? I don't think I can do much, God. Can you believe me? I can do that. I can do that. Can you see the arrogance of that? When we don't do that, when it's like, it's okay, God, I'll work it out. It's okay, God, I'll build, build something for you. It's okay, God, we'll build this ministry. We'll do this. It's okay, God, I'll work harder. I'll pray harder. I'll try harder. And God's just like, all I'm asking you to do is believe me. But you're going to go do all this stuff. All I'm asking you to do is believe. How many of you ever got there to that place of brokenness where you believe? You've tried everything. You've tried everything. You've listened to everybody. You've done everything you could do. And then you come to the place of, God, I can't do this. I just need help. And God's not asking you to say, you need to have great faith. You need to have the faith that that preacher has on YouTube or GodTube or whatever it is with this $500 suit. God doesn't say that. All he's saying is, look at me. Do you trust me? Yes, sir. I trust you. I trust you. Count it unto your righteousness. Amen? Count it unto your righteousness. Having, having done the will of God, that you may receive the promise. Don't throw away your confidence, he says. This is when the testing comes. That we not give up. We keep believing. We keep believing. When, will God find faith on the earth when he returns? We've got to keep believing. It's difficult. That's why right after that it says, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves. Why? Because we need each other. Right? One of those brothers comes walking in there when you brothers go to pray or you sisters, and it's like, what's wrong with you? It's like, you know, I just, I know. you can see they feel like giving up. And what do you do? You don't sympathize with them. You give them a swift spiritual kick. Yeah? How many of you know you need that at times? I don't want people around me like, poor Frank. Oh, well, I probably do want them around us, but it's not what I need. Right? I remember once having such a bad time in my basement overseas, and I was just like, I was complaining, like, Lord, this and that. And my wife was in the room. Instead of my wife coming and going, poor baby, she said, I'm leaving. She said, she knew I got to get out. In case God's judgment falls, I don't want to even be in here. That was what I needed. It woke me up. It was like, wow, I really am in a bad way that she had to leave the room. We don't need sympathy in a wrong way. Yeah? We need the right kind of sympathy. We need Holy Ghost sympathy. What's that? It says, I'm going to send you the comforter. What does that mean? It means you feel like quitting. You don't think you can go on. Paul's in a prison cell. You're looking at your bank account. Your body's aching. You're praying for someone who's away from the Lord. All these things hurt. The Holy Ghost comes, and it says he shores us up. He comes and says, come on, you can make it. You can make it. God's never harsh with us unless we really need it. It says we, we, we don't have a high priest who can't be touched in what we were touched. It says he was touched in all the ways we were. Did you know that? You sit here this morning, you say, I feel so rejected. Nobody could understand. Jesus understands. He faced rejection like you can't imagine. Yeah. My financial needs are so difficult. The Lord doesn't understand. He understands. He had a bag of money and he let a thief keep it. God knows everything we've been through, he's been through. So he can shore us up. All he's asking this morning is we believe, actively believe. We're praying for God. We're a well. We're praying for God. You bring the hurting people, God. Not only you bring them, but he's going to what? He's going to heal them. How's he going to heal them? He's going to heal them by his power, his way. Not through our psychology. Not through all that what, what we need to say and we need to do. We don't know that. God's going to do it. I mean, I've been doing this for a long time, and I can't tell you the peace of it. I've never, never had a counseling center. I've never felt like I need to counsel. My wife has never been, you know, co-pastor where, where she counsels all these people and all these women. That's why she still has her marbles. 
It's such a, such a relief when you're sitting with somebody. You can sense their pain, and you, you don't have all the answers, but you know what? I know Jesus does. When you really believe, God can heal you. How, Brother Frank? I don't know, but we're going to pray because I know he can. Amen? Because I know he can. There's so many wounds out there, it's unbelievable, but God can heal them. We have to have faith. We have to believe him. Listen to these words that God told Haggai. I mean Habakkuk, sorry. Habakkuk chapter 2, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower, and I'll watch to see what he will say unto me and what I will answer when I'm reproved. This is the prophet who stands there and says, I'm waiting for God to speak to me. He can correct me if he wants. How many of you know sometimes that's why we don't hear from God? I need to hear from God. What do you need to hear? I want to hear the answer to this. I want to hear the answer to that. I want to hear something good. Okay, well, when you really want to hear God is when you open your heart and say, God, speak to me. Say whatever you want. This is where this man is at. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon the tablets that he may runs it, reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. Here's the promise. It's got an appointed time. But at the end it will speak. At the end it's going to speak. God's given you a promise. In the end it's going to speak. It will not lie. Somebody say amen. amen. It will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it. In other words, well, it seems to be delayed, wait for it. For it shall surely come to pass, it will not tarry. This is God's encouragement. He's saying, listen, you got a promise, hang on to it and wait for it, because it's not going to tarry. It's going to come to pass. You might have to wait some but it's going to come to pass. Behold, the soul which is lifted up in him is not right. In other words, the proud heart is not right. The one that thinks you can do it. The one that thinks there's a way we can work. Can you see that? Do you see that why America is filled with Christianity, but as a nation, we're undone? doesn't mean there are not a lot of Christians here and a lot of lovely believers, but it means too much we think we can get it done. The heart that is lifted up is not right, but the just will live. How? By faith. Does that, does that change that whole concept? People say, oh, I'm going to live by faith. What does that mean? You're going to quit your job? What does it mean? You live by, to live by faith, we live by it every single day. It means we take the promises of God. What has God spoken to you? Now, there are promises, even as he hasn't spoken directly to you, there's promises that will never leave you or forsake you, that the blood of Jesus is enough. It doesn't mean we just go and pull some scripture out. Like, I can do all things through Christ, and then we go to the Christian bookstore and overpay for some plaque so we can walk around saying, I can do this, and I can do that, and I can be a success. Well, really what that means is Paul said, I can do all things through Christ. He said, I can abase and abound. No matter what situation I am, I'm content. That changes that whole scripture, doesn't it? So it doesn't mean we just reach in here and pull out whatever we want. But it means there's foundational promises. God will bring you through. God will never leave you. But then there's other things that God has spoken to you, like he did to Abraham. What has he spoke to you? But Lord, everything's been set against that. Of course this is, because Satan hates the word of God. God's given you a promise. Don't give up on it. As a church, God's given us promises. We're believing them. It's been difficult at times, but we're not going to let go of those promises until we see them come to pass. We keep believing God. Noah kept building that ark. Believe in God. Believe in God. Daniel was believing God, seeing things afar off. Paul was believing God. That's if you look at Paul's letters and how he built those churches and the way he ministered, he was not ministering for that moment. He wasn't trying to get some, some gratification on, on this church or that church. He, was, he was, had eternity in view. We've got to walk by faith. By faith. 
that God's going to have his way. Amen? The just shall live by faith. You've been justified by the blood of Jesus. Amen. You've been justified by the cross. Amen. And how do you continue to stand in that justification? By faith. I believe everything he did on the cross was done. I believe his blood is enough. I believe he will bring me through. I believe you, Lord. There's a rest of faith. That rest says, I'm not, I'm not making anything happen of my own. It doesn't mean we're inactive. Even James quotes these, this verse again when James says, the just will live by faith, and he's talking about faith without works is dead. He's meaning Abraham was justified by faith, but he still had to do what God said. So it means we carry out what he's speaking for us to do. But when we carry those things out, it's by what? By faith. God has asked you to do something. How many Christians miss that faith? How many Christians do I know? It's like, what has God told you to do? Just something simple. And they're like, nah, it's not that important. It's like, what? Just do it. Do, if you just would do what he said to do, things will open up. Just do what he said. We've lost so much of that. You see, that's, that's, that's parenthood. That's what we're teaching our children. We're teaching our children trust. We're teaching our, supposed to be teaching our children the right things. But we don't understand all those things. As we said before, we're in a generation where nobody trusts. Children don't trust their parents. Husbands don't trust their wives. Wives don't trust their husbands. People don't trust uh, uh, church leaders. And Lord, no, nobody trusts the government anymore. People just have been taught not to trust. But we're going to trust our God. Amen? Because he's faithful. We have a covenant with him. And his covenant is filled with precious promises. His covenant is filled with riches that are waiting for us. His covenant is filled with all his provisions. And on our side, what is God asking? Believe it. To believe. That's what he's asking. Will you believe me? Believe me. And God makes it available for us to do that. Amen? Say, but Brother Frank, sometimes I doubt. Me too. Brother Frank, sometimes I struggle. Me too. But you know who doesn't? Jesus. Jesus. He doesn't. Do you see how that just humbles you in a good way? When it's like, when you realize, I can't do it. How many, in the, even in this city, filled with churches, how many believers are struggling, trying as hard as they can to be good Christians and failing miserably? Because they have to get to that point, as Brother T. Austin Spark says, why do you have all these, these despair after despair after despair? Have one good despair and realize, I can't do it. He's other than me. But as I trust him. You see, you don't get saved and go to Bible school and become a man of God and say, I trusted God, now we go forward. Every single day you've got to trust. When does it stop? Never stops. How many of you ever felt like that before? Felt like, man, I've been believing God and things are going good. I've been believing God. I'd just like to have a break. But you're not going to get a break because it never stops. Because God is a God of what? Faith. He speaks things as not as though they were. Like with Abraham. Hey, you're going to be a father of many nations. Just think about how crazy that is. Did that come to pass? Think about the Jews all down through history. Think about the spiritual Jews. All the people that have been saved all through history. Like the stars in the sky. Who would have ever figured that out? God's promise has come to pass. Look at Paul, believing God, preaching. Man, he's in that prison. He says, listen, whether I'm locked up or not, I'm believing the word of God is not locked up. Paul, Paul doing what God said to do, had no, no, no way of knowing that you and I would be reading his words today. Paul wasn't sitting there writing to those churches thinking, I'm writing the Bible. And it's going to be a bestseller. They're going to remember me forever. He cared nothing about reputation. But God did more than he could ever ask and more than he could ever think. God can do it. Look at Hannah believing for that child. All she wants is a son. She gives him back to the Lord. But the Lord's got a purpose and a plan. I'm going to have Samuel. We're going to turn this thing upside down. 
God's got its purposes. Do you see how deep that is? How, how that transcends just some simple message of, of, of God's got a purpose for you and you need to have vision and you can be successful and you could, you, 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 forget all that. God's got a purpose and you're caught up in it. That's why we have to be so clear and God, God has always, 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 always been so clear about how difficult things might be. Amen? Jesus was always saying, this is going to happen, guys. I'm just telling you so that you won't be offended. He always tried to warn us, but we don't like to listen to that. <laughs> he knew. He knew that he, where he was going to take us and how he could bring us through under his, under his purposes for his ways. He knew it so that we not give up. And that those difficulties would just make us stronger and stronger and stronger in our faith. Amen? This is why, this is why so many times to preach that way and just to preach faith and to get people worked up. I've seen the damage of that again and again and again. You just work people up and they're not ready for, that, for, for, for Satan's going to come and try to come against them in everything that they're trying to walk in. Find me a man, woman that has a real promise of God. Show me one that really has got a promise from God. And I'll show you somebody who's going to go through some difficulties. I saw the damage of that so many years ago. People go into meetings. There was all this hype. And there was a lot of knowledge and a lot of even the spirit moving. And people got it so excited. But then they went out in there into the blowing wilderness. They went out there and, and opposition began to come. And the rich preachers and the successful preachers were nowhere to be found. There's less to us poor, ignorant preachers to pick up the pieces. But I'm telling you this morning, you, God's given you a promise, it might get difficult. But these are the words we have saw this morning. Don't throw away your confidence. Hang on. You see the patience of Job. You see the patience of Abraham. You see how they've hung on and, and, can, and clung to those promises. Amen? Till God gets what he wants. That's glory. Glory is when the heart of the Father is satisfied. Amen? And we want him to be satisfied. We want him to have his way in this generation. Amen? We want people to see God for who he is. A God that is able. Amen? A God that is able. See, that's real faith. My God is able. Then why all this? My God is able. My God is able. Like Brother Oscar telling me on the phone, Frank, it's important for you to know that I'm not going to stop in the work of the Lord. He said, I wasn't worried about that to begin with. That's faith. Amen? We continue to believe. And my little daughter, Tabitha, was 12 years old. She lost her little brother. When finally, when she went back to school, she came home. She said, Dad, you know, the kids all came up to me at school today. We were overseas. There were hardly any Christians. She said, and they were asking me, well, Tabitha, do you still believe in your God? She said, I told them, my God lives. 12-year-old, I believe in my God. I believe in my God. Amen? I believe in my God. That is devil kicking faith. That's the faith Satan hates. He hates the faith of Paul being stoned outside the city and getting back up. He hates the faith of Paul being thrown in prison and he still believes. He hates the faith of after a night of tears, you get up in the morning and say, my God lives. That, my brother and sister, is resurrection life. Amen? And that is what we need to pray into every situation where we see. God can do it. God can do it. May God touch the brokenhearted. There are many out there. Touch those that are devastated. But we don't have a magical God who just wants to wave a wand and everything's okay. He wants to touch the soul in the deepest way. 
and then have that soul walk it out so that Satan does not have an inroad. Amen? Abraham believed God. Do you believe the word this morning? To be able to say, God, the preacher's up there, whatever's of you, I'm quite, I'm quite content to realize and to accept that every, I may not get everything right, but if you've heard the word of God this morning, to say, I believe it, God. I simply believe that you are able, God, to perform the promises you've given me and given this church. I believe it, God. I believe it. It'll give you strength to carry on. It'll give you hope. Like Abraham, hope, hoping against hope. For too long, the church has tried to prove to the world, see, God is with us. We don't have to do that. The world will see God is with us. Though though they slay us, yet will we, though God slay us, yet will we serve him. And though they come against us, that's when they'll see our faith. Do you still believe? We believe in our God because he is. Amen? God wants faith. God wants faith. Amen. He wants faith that steps out and says yes. God wants faith from you young women. Amen? As it says in, in, in Hebrews 11, women receiving back their dead. Amen? Those are women who believed in resurrection life. This is what God wants. Step out in the faith God has asked you to step out in. Don't have to step out in more. Your faith will grow. What has he told you to do? Do it. Take that step. And God will tell you the next step and the next step and the next step. Amen? You okay there, Bruce? Almost done. I'm going to be quiet now because there's more to say, but I'm not going to say it because we're, we're not going to be foolish Galatians, are we? God will give us a spirit. How? Just believing. God will do miracles among us. How? Just believing. God will bring us through. How? Just believing. God will answer prayers. How? Just believing. There's more he may require of us, but this morning we have to stand with this, I believe. Let's stand together. I will take a moment. Take just a moment. What has God spoke to you? What promise has he given you? Small or large, whatever promise he's given you. I want you to resurrect that and get back to that and believe it. As a church, we believe in God's going to make us a well. God's going to touch this generation. God's going to touch this city. Yes. yes, he will. Let's believe him this morning. Amen. God's going to bring you through because he loves you and also because God had a purpose. When he saved you, he had a purpose. He wants that purpose to come to pass. He'll do it. How many of you have been surprised? Even you getting off your own self are things happening, and yet you still find your way back, and you say, oh, yep, God's brought me back. Amen? Why? Because he loves you. He saved you for a purpose. Amen? And he's kept this church going for a purpose. So, Lord, we believe you this morning. We simply believe. We simply say amen. We believe you. We believe you. And we thank you for who you are. In Jesus' name. Can you say amen, Bruce? He's like, y'all need to be done because I've had enough. Amen. All right, I want you to walk with that. And I expect to hear some testimonies from it. Amen.